Hello YouTube. I just finished building a floating duck house, a refuge so that my ducks can get away from the foxes and coyotes at night. I built it using some ideas that I gathered from other YouTubers videos about building their duck houses. So thank you everyone for sharing your ideas and I combined them with my own ideas and put together the construction that I have here today and so I thought I would share it. So if you'll bear with my very amateur camera skills, um, I will flip the phone around and show you what I made and tell you a little bit about how I did it. So here it is on my workbench. Um, I made it out of three quarter inch wooden, square wooden dowels that I got at the home store. I wanted it to be very lightweight so that it wouldn't sink um, I do hope I made it strong enough, though, to withstand the winds that we're having. Uh, I just kind of framed up a simple frame on three sides and used some poplar um, craft wood strips to make bracing on all the corners to, to give it some strength and to keep it square. And I also framed up a roof, um, used my Makita jigsaw to cut all the pieces, and you'll need to use the angle adjustment on your jigsaw if you want to do a, a hipped roof like I did to get the rafters cut to fit to the ridge beam. Um, I did a hipped roof only because my house has a hipped roof, and my house is going to be in the background of this, so I just sort of wanted it to look cute. I um, also used my jigsaw to cut FRP, fiberglass paneling, that you can find in the uh, building supply section of the home store, too. It's waterproof, it's lightweight, very durable, and also soilproof, so hopefully duck, uh, duck poop will not stick to it and cause it to rot. Everything about the design... Um, it was important to make it waterproof and rot proof because it's sitting out there in the pond getting wet a lot and um, getting pooped on too. To kind of help waterproof my wood frame I spray painted the entire thing and on the the bottom pieces the sill plate and a, a few inches up the the framing members I also painted it with some clear polyurethane before I put on the siding and spray painted it just to seal it against soiling. I'm sorry we're so out of focus here. And you can see I've got my screws ready to go to screw it onto the floating platform. I pre-drilled the holes for these. Everything that you drill, you want to pre-drill the holes. It makes it come together much more successfully. And I've got the, the screws just set in about halfway so that I can take the house down to my floating platform and screw it in easily. For the um, the seams on the roof, I caulked it with a paintable caulk first and then spray painted over everything when I was done. And I used my jigsaw um, to cut all these pieces. I'm not very skilled in cutting FRP, so you can see that I broke off the corners. So if you want to use this same material, you might ask at the home store or Google um, or YouTube search for a technique to properly cut this material without your corners getting splintered off. Okay, so here's my floating platform. Again, thinking about wanting to be highly rot resistant and duck proof, uh, duck poop proof, I decided to use plastic lumber. Looks like wood, but it's actually made of recycled plastic. And it's really great, but it's really heavy, I discovered. And so, um, and it won't float on its own. So to make it float, I had to use some foam underneath. And I need to flip it over and then I can show you what I did on the underside. Okay, here's my underside. Um, first, the boards, I just cut them to the length that I wanted with my jigsaw. And then I took another board and I cut it lengthwise into three strips to sort of use as my, my framing underneath to frame out the platform screwed those together really well, pre-drilled the holes of course, and I even countersunk the screws just using a drill bit, the slight bit 
larger than the head of the screw and just drilling down just a little hole just deep enough so that the head of that screw would sink in and be flush with the deck when I was finished so the ducks wouldn't be stepping on any screw heads sticking up. Then I used great stuff foam in a can as glue to glue these planks of styrofoam to the underside. I uh, got the styrofoam at the craft store. When you lay those on, uh, you, you squirt your, your uh, lines of great stuff on first. Lay the foam on. Then lay a 2x4 across the top and clamp it down and keep it clamped overnight until it's completely dried and cured because the foam will expand and will push your styrofoam right off your, your uh, platform. So that's the underside. Top side, we're going to set the duck house on it and screw it on and launch it out there for these gals. All right, I got my duck house screwed down to my floating platform. Sorry, I couldn't show you doing, uh, show you me doing that, but I'm alone holding the phone and the drill. I can't do them both at the same time. But this is it. So now I've just got to drag it to the pond and try to get it launched safely. Out. I've got it tied up here with a rope, and I'm going to tow it with my rowboat. Um, last detail how to anchor it in place. I used a hole drilling attachment for my drill um, to cut a hole all the way through the floating platform and the foam. I have two of them, one on each side, and what I'm going to do is drive a PVC pipe through that hole and hammer it down into the ground, into the, the sand in the bottom of the pond. And that will anchor my duck house in place and also by having two points it'll keep it from spinning when the wind blows. So I'll show you the finished product in a moment. Okay, here's my finished duck house installed in the center of my pond. You can see the, the two PVC pipes that I used as anchors through the holes that I drilled in the deck. I wish I'd been able to film myself putting this in place because it was YouTube gold. It was very comical, me trying to balance myself in my little rowboat here and get the, get the duck house positioned and get the anchors in place. It just, it was a mess. So I ended up going to get my husband's waders out of the shed and I put them on and just got in the pond and anchored it in place. Um, that's what I'd recommend. But if you don't have waders or your pond's too deep, then get a friend to come over and steady your boat for you with a, with a pole or an oar while you get the anchors in place. So for the, the anchors, PVC pipes, um, I cut them long enough to go through the water and then down at least a foot into the, the dirt in the bottom, uh, the ground under the pond. I cut the ground ends with my jigsaw on an angle. The wind is already starting to drift us away here. Um, so that they'd be kind of spear-like and pierced down into the ground much more easily. Um, got them in place. Kind of started them out by just twisting and pushing down a little bit to get them positioned. And then I used a hammer and I just hammered the top of the pipes until I got them driven down deep enough into the ground under the pond uh, to keep it really steady and firm in place. When the wind blows, they sway a little bit and flex a little bit, but it doesn't drift away. And I have them cut really tall like they are because in the rainy months here, the water level of the pond gets up level with the, the ground that you can see in the background. And so this way, the duck house can kind of rise with the water level, but not come out of place. I've got them a little bit of exposed deck out on the front that they can sit on, and then the shelter in the back. So that is it. I hope my idea and how I did it might be helpful to somebody else. And now I'm going to row out of the way so the ducks will come on over and enjoy it.